viewers. In this episode, we are going to talk about tourism planning and development. This includes five objectives. First one is introduction, second need for planning, third precautions to be taken by planners, fourth sustainable planning, fifth one sustainable destination development. Tourism has been a major social phenomenon of societies all along. It is motivated by natural urge of every human being for new experience, adventure, education and entertainment. The importance of tourism as an instrument for economic growth and development, employment opportunities and income generation particularly in remote and backward areas. It is the largest service industry globally in terms of gross revenue as well as foreign exchange earnings. Tourism can play an important and effective role in achieving the growth with equity. Tourism is one economic sector in India that has the potential to grow at a high rate and can ensure consequential development of the infrastructure at the destination. It has the capacity to capitalize the country's success in the service sector and provide sustainable growth. Tourism has the potential to stimulate other economic sectors through its backward and forward linkages and cross sectorial synergies with sectors like agriculture, horticulture, poultry, handicrafts, transport, hospitality, constructions, etc. Expenditure on tourism induces a chain of transactions requiring the supply of goods and services from these related sectors. Tourism has grown in the last 50 years in most areas as an unplanned activities. The result has been FSR development which has resulted in many problems. In many Southeast Asian countries like Thailand, Singapore, Japan, etc. Second one, need for planning. The serious situations caused by FSR development has made people and government aware of the need for planning for tourism based on scientific research of the carrying capacity of the destination. More seats in a bus or in a plane cannot be accommodated than its capacity. Similarly, a hotel cannot take more customers than the number of rooms available. Therefore, there is a need for a proper planning for tourism development. Tourism planning should be included in the general planning. This coordinated approach has a direct bearing on the success of the tourism industry. A proper planning of physical, legal, financial, social, cultural, ecological and environmental aspects based on in-depth research study will help for sustainable tourism growth. Next is national goal. Decision on national level has to be taken by the central government in consultation with the state government and other stakeholders of the tourism industry. A national policy has to be framed and accepted in this direction. The national tourism policy gives the direction in which the tourism development should take place. The policy should spell out the national goals and objectives. Generally, the national goals should cover the following aspects. The first one is protection and preservation of natural and cultural resources of the country. Second is to protect and preserve the natural and cultural heritage of the country. Third, to maximize the economic benefits in terms of higher standard of living of the people. Fourth one, creation of new jobs and increase in the income of the local community. Fifth one, stimulation of development at the local and regional level. 
sixth one development of responsible tourism concept wherein local community are involved in the decision making process seventh one development of good infrastructure facilities at the destination for the comforts of the tourists eighth one ensuring need based development in each destination taking into consideration the carrying capacity of the destination ninth one maximum visitor satisfaction is achieved third heading precautions to be taken by planners the planners have to take many factors into considerations among them the first one is to supply and demand tourism development is a complex phenomenon requiring in depth study of resources and demand pattern in each area or country the local population may have their own tastes and preferences some may like natural destinations some may like historical and archaeological places some others may go to get entertainment etc therefore tourism development has to be planned depending upon the demand for such destination second is establishing the objectives the information gathered should be used to develop a composite picture of what tourism can do to a particular area in order to relate the projected information into a decision there must be a basis for comparison this basis is the cumulative set of objectives which should be developed concurrently basically the tourism objectives shall be formed within the overall economic and social objectives of the country third is territorial planning the need will arise of locating each step of tourism development so as to fit in with the general policy of territorial planning particular care should be taken to protect the natural and cultural assets of the country the need for tourism territorial planning should reconcile with the limits of space of urbanization which may become a serious danger to tourism fourth one financial planning it is very essential for any developmental plan to make any destinations attractive very good facilities have to be provided which requires huge investment each proposal has to be analyzed taking into account its cost benefit ratio fifth one human resource planning professionals and efficient management is a prerequisite for the success of tourism project tourism basically being a service industry development of destination shall be preceded by highly qualified and trained staff a variety of persons are required starting from unskilled to highly professional who have to develop and manage the destination human resource management needs to be integrated with other planning effective and efficient management recognize and uses the human assets of the organization to achieve the goals of the organization sixth one marketing and promotion the next stage in planning is concerned with developing the promotional activities aimed at launching new destinations within and outside the country the various channels of communications shall be effectively used to inform the tourist and stimulate the desire for tourism which may include literature in the form of catalogs brochures folders direct mail advertisements and publicity seventh one monitoring the progress the speed at which the project is being executed shall be periodically reviewed the responsibilities of the planners is to monitor the progress of the projects continuously so that the project is completed well within the time frame eighth one planning levels planning is the blueprint of 
projected plan of action to achieve the given objective. Good planning is followed by promote execution leading the desired result at the given time. Planning is a dynamic process and it draws fuel from objectives of the organization. It guides the managers and executives of the firm to work for achieving their goal. Next is planning levels. Planning has to be done at two levels. They are regional and national. At national level, the central government should be involved in developing the selected area on the basis of comprehensive research conducted by tourism professionals. The guiding principle in the selection process should be its marketability to both domestic and international tourists. Expected revenue to be generated and projection of the future demand should be showed. The central government should also lay down the broad framework for developing tourism projects at regional and local levels. Ninth one is regional planning. Regional level planning gives better scope for sustainable development. It should be the responsibility of the local government to start and implement destination planning process. The service of private players may be taken but the government and its agencies should take a decisive role in tourism planning. Steps involved in planning are survey and preparation of detailed project report. The first one is survey. A research survey has to be conducted to find out the potentiality of the tourism of the region. The survey should study in details of the area in which tourism can be developed, existing facilities of that region, additional facilities required, the sources of funding, the gestation period, etc. It should also contain information on its economic feasibility and commercial viability. Next step is preparation of detailed project report. If the preliminary survey is positive, then the authorities concerned shall take the assistance of technical people to prepare detailed project report. The DPR should contain total cost of the project, time required for its execution, sources of funding, the persons in its implementation, the expected revenue generation, etc. The cost may further be subdivided into the cost of the main project and the cost involved in the infrastructure development. Normally, the cost of the main project including basic infrastructures like roads, water supply, sewage, etc. has to be borne by the government while other facilities to tourists like accommodations, food, recreations, transportation, entertainment, etc. may be left to the private players. The DPR should take into accounts the tourism impact on ecology, environment, socio-cultural impact and other related issues. The effect of migration of local community if it is involved in the destination development has to be carefully studied. The DPR should also contain the space required for destination development and its availability with least disturbance to the existing setup. If the existing set has to be disturbed, then the local community must be taken into confidence while preparing the plan only. They should be fully ensured that they will be properly rehabilitated. Fourth one, sustainable development. A comprehensive tourism planning should take into consideration a number of factors like tourism resources, organizations, markets, economic, environmental, socio-cultural aspects of tourism development. Successful planning and tourism development means serving both tourist and local community. This market orientation must be balanced with a clear view 
as to how tourism serves the local community interest as well as tourist interest. The first priority of tourism development should be the interest of local community and next the tourists. Tourism development must be compatible with other activities in the destination and should be supported by local community. Therefore, tourism planning should be integrated with the local and regional planning and development. Tourism development and its impacts are two major areas of concern. The development of tourism throughout the world has brought immense economic opportunities and benefits, but at the same time it has put immense pressure on the natural environment and socio-cultural adverse effect on the local community. While sharing the economic benefits of tourism development, the local community has been on the receiving end. The relationship between mass tourism and culture has resulted in the change in the value system. The community structure, the family relationship, traditional life system, lifestyles, the morality of the host community are generally influenced by tourism. Next is sustainable approach. The absence of sustainable approach in the process of tourism development is more discernible in case of developing countries where inadequate legal and social controls have given way to the defaulters. These defaulters have come out with their narrow agenda of reaping commercial benefit over the existing socio-cultural environment. The major area of neglect is the careful concern for the ecology and environment as well as socio-cultural aspects. The whole debate focuses on the inclusion of sustainable approach towards ecological, environmental, socio-cultural aspects and then the tourism development. In the second half of the 20th century, tourism has developed into a major economic cultural and social phenomenon. Because of its economic benefits, many countries were fascinated to develop mass tourists, overlooking its negative impact. The economic potency of tourism can be realized from the amount of wealth and employments it generates. Fifth one, sustainable destination development. The idea of sustainable development is of recent concept. This idea was promoted by the Brendel Land Report in 1987 and acknowledged by the international community at the Rio summit in 1992. It was again discussed at the World Summit on Sustainable Development in Johannesburg in 2002. It has been much debated in United Nations and other international forum by the academicians, NGOs and other concerned people. However, most emphasis has been on environmental sustainability. The global effect of overusing the natural resources may lead to undesirable consequences, but the concept of sustainable development is much wider than the environmental factor. They are developed to move a destination from its current competitive position to a more desirable future competitive position. They adopt a long term strategy for its sustainability. This involves the vision, objective, direction and commitment. They are very complex in nature and involve many stakeholders. To maintain sustainability, all the stakeholders in the tourism industry shall follow certain principles and disciplines. Next is concept of sustainable tourism development. Before understanding the principle behind the sustainable tourism development, it is necessary to understand its concept. During 1980s, it became apparent that major global environmental changes were occurring suddenly and silently. The world slowly started realizing the changes 
taking place in the global environment, the concept of sustainable tourism development came from this realization. It was first mentioned in 1987 in a report published by the World Commission on Environment and Development. It identified the sustainable development as development that meets the needs of present generation without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own demand. In other words, it means utilizing all natural resources at present making enough provision for the use by the future generations. The report identifies the following key principles. They are intergenerational equity. It means that the range of activities and the scope of ecological diversity available to future generations are at least as broad as that used by current generations. Next is social justice and poverty elevation. Intergenerational equity further aims at social justice and poverty elevation, improving the well-being of the common people and not just benefiting the economically upper class alone. Third one, community participation. The local community should become a stakeholder in the destination development. They should be taken into confidence and should actively participate in the destination development. Fourth, environmental protection. The protection of ecology and environment is a precondition for any destination development plan. A detailed study has to be undertaken by the expert team to assess the environmental impact. Fifth one, options. Different options to reduce the adverse impact of tourism development should be carefully studied and the best opinion taken up before coming to final decision. Tourism is most ideally suited to adopt sustainability as a guiding principle. Tourism except transport does not consume non-renewable resources. Resources used by tourism both natural and cultural are non-consumptive making them renewable. The economic benefit of tourism should reach all the people in the community. Next is planning for sustainable development. The sustainable development approach implies that the natural, cultural, ecological and environmental resources of tourism should be conserved for future use. This approach is important because most tourism development depends on attractions and activities related to natural, cultural, archaeological, historical, environmental and heritage patterns of the destination. If these resources are destroyed or spoiled, then the destination may not attract the tourist in future. The UNWTO has defined sustainable tourism development as tourism which leads to management of all resources in such a way that economic, social and aesthetic needs can be filled while maintaining cultural integrity, essential ecological process, biological diversity and the support system. Over the last two decades, a set of principles have been developed to put these ideas into practice. These principles identified with sustainable tourism are having four pillars that is economic sustainability, ecological sustainability, cultural sustainability and community sustainability. First one economic sustainability. It should be made profitable both on short term and long term basis. It should involve all the stakeholder in the planning as well as in the implementation process. Form the supply chain mechanism from micro level to macro level involving multinational companies. Develop good number of human resources by providing them skill and training in the required areas. Diversify the product by developing a wide range of tourism activities. A percentage of income generated 
shall be used for further development, provide financial incentives to stakeholders to maintain sustainability. Next is ecological and environmental sustainability. Environment may be defined as the sum total of all conditions that affects the development and life of all organs. The human environment consists of physical, biological and social influences. Environments may also be defined as the sum total of substances and forces external to the organism in such a manner that it affects the organism survival. Since man's life is regulated by land, water, air, flora and fauna, they automatically becomes the constituents of man's environment. This environment is always in the state of continuous changes. Environment would include not only the immediate surroundings, but also a variety of factors connected with the human activity and become an important factor with respect to other members of ecosystem. Next is tourism and environment. The relationship between tourism and environment is one of the delicate balances between the development and protecting the environment. The number of types of tourism are directly related to environment such as adventure tourism, wildlife tourism, water sports, beach tourism, etc. With the rapid development of tourism all over the world, many people and environmentalists are more concerned about the impact of tourism on environment. The degree and intensity of the impact depends upon the level of contact between the tourist and the host, the stage through which the destination is passing, type of tourism, seasonality, degree of local control over the industry, type and scale of development, specific activities undertaken at the destination are all matters. Tourism impact or categorized as on-site and off-site are direct and indirect. The following are some of the direct impacts of tourism. First one is soil erosion and compaction. Second, disturbances to wildlife. Third, spoiling of natural vegetation. Fourth, littering and vandalism. Fifth, water and air pollution. Sixth, reclamation of land for destination development. Next is cultural sustainability. Cultural tourism designates a system of relationship involving people through interaction which is based on the principle of give and take. Tourism should develop multiculture and the culture should be adopted. But many a times the local people, particularly youngsters, may be attracted by the visitors culture which in long run spoil the local culture. Therefore, all efforts should be made to preserve and protect the local cultures and its diversity. Conclusion Tourism development and its impacts are two major areas of concern. The development of tourism throughout the world has brought immense economic opportunities and benefits. But at the same time, it has put immense pressure on the natural environment and socio-cultural adverse effect on the local community. Tourism development must be compatible with other activities in the destination and it should be supported by local community. Therefore, tourism planning should be integrated with the local and regional planning and development. Thank you.